friends. This is Roy, Roy Olson, and uh, I'm your friend. I'd like to talk to you today about the Holy Spirit and vision. Vision. Vision is extremely important in the personal life, and it's an indication of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, Peter, preaching on the day of Pentecost, uh, talking about uh, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, he said some of the indicators of this infilling of the Holy Spirit is visions and dreams, visions and dreams. Proverbs 29, 18 says, you know, if you don't have a vision, if there is no vision, people perish. Basically, if you don't know where you're going, you have no direction, then any direction is okay. And of course, none of us want to live that way. Without a vision, without a direction, without a purpose, without a goal, it, it leads to somewhat of a maintenance life. In other words, every day seems to be the same. You get through each day and, uh, you know, the rat race, go to work, uh, come home, eat, sleep, watch TV maybe, uh, get up in the morning, breakfast, you know, and on, on and on and on. So it's kind of a humdrum, boring, status quo, every day the same kind of a, a life. And we were not made for that. In fact, without a vision, to some extent, we're blind in terms of purpose and goal and direction. And uh, do not we not read in the Bible that some people, it says, they say they're rich, but they don't know that they're amongst other things, that they're blind, blind. And um, if we don't have a vision, I mean, it's not that difficult. Uh, God is not that distance. Uh, it, it simply says, you know, ask, ask. Make it a point to pray and ask God what your direction is. And then seek it. There are ways to determine what you're blessed with, what you're good at, uh, how God has given you talents and abilities. And probably that's an indication of uh, a way in which God would uh, bless you, use you. And then, of course, ask, seek, and the next one is knock. Knock. Um, go after it. I don't want to say bang down some doors, but at least bang at some doors. Why do we want to do this? Why do we want to think about that? Because simply, every life, your life, my life, we're here for a purpose. We have significance. There is a calling, there's a direction, there's a, a plan, and yes, there's timing as well. When you have vision, as we've said, you have focus, you have direction. You have clarity, you have priority. I think of three men all laying brick. They were really doing exactly the same thing. Mortar and brick, mortar and brick. The first guy, they asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm laying brick. Second guy, what are you doing? He says, I'm building a wall. The third guy, they asked him, what are you doing? He says, I'm building a cathedral. Aha. Uh -huh. Perspective, vision, purpose, significance. And whenever you have a humdrum life, you don't have uh, a purpose, then you're laying brick. But when you have purpose and every day contributes to that, every brick contri contributes to the cathedral, you're building in some way the cathedral of your life. 
why do we want a vision? Because for each one of us, there's a mission, there's a task. We have significance. And when we see that, that will bring us passion. Just one dream away, one divine thought, one revelation can change our entire life and uh, put purpose and meaning to every day. Noah, build that ark. Abraham, go into the promised land. Joseph, go for the kingdom. Go for rulership. Moses, let my people go. Joshua, bring my people into the promised land. David, teach my people to worship. Solomon, teach my people to learn wisdom. Esther, for such a time as this. John the Baptist, prepare the way. John, declare that Jesus is God. Peter, go to the Jews. Paul, go to the Gentiles. Apollos, convince them. All those great people, they're gone. They were here. They did what God put them on earth to do, and they're gone. Now it's your turn. Now it's my turn. Now it's our turn on the stage of life. And so I ask myself this question, do I have a, a vision for my, my family, the church I attend, the ministry that God has given to me, the job, and <clears throat> for the people? Do I have a vision for my wife? or my children? Does anybody have a vision for the youth, the orphans? One divine encounter can bring about a ministry, a business, an orphanage, a book, a family, a future, a meaningful life. God had a thought. He spoke, a universe was born and the power of a vision. If I don't have a vision for my ministry, then I just ask, who has a vision for my ministry? I'm afraid that it's my responsibility to pursue the vision. If I don't look to God for me, then who will? The fact is, nobody will. And... Uh, it is our responsibility. There are about six going on seven billion people on earth. And I just asked the question, of those six billion, how many people would pray for me? Well, they don't even know me. Maybe a thousand people know me. And of those thousand people, perhaps, that know me, how many pray for me? Very few, very few. And then, of course, the ultimate question is, how many people pray for me with intercession to lay hold of God that I might fulfill in my call in this life and run the race? The probability is that if you have one, you are very blessed. It's probably your mother or your wife, or husband, or your immediate family. But ultimately, you are the responsible person to believe God for your relationships, your family, your job, your church, your pastor, your leaders, your ministry. And, uh, well, the, the, as wide as the spectrum of the colors in the rainbow, so different uh, is our calling, as different as our fingerprint or our DNA. And maybe our focus is family, children, teens, youth, music, writing, cooking, sewing, uh, children's ministry, dance, technology, teaching, evangelism, art, carpentry, metalwork. How many ways does God speak to us? Well, Reminded of the man who is in the flooded area, standing on the roof, praying, God, send me, come and save me, come and save me. And 
you know the story, the helicopter comes by, he says, no, no, I'm waiting for God to save me. A boat comes by, wanting to help, no, no, I'm waiting for God to save me, and he, he drowns, goes to heaven, and he asks God, why didn't you save me? And God said, well, I sent a helicopter, I sent a boat, and you turn them both down. No, God can speak to us in sleep when we're awake. God can speak to us through opportunities. God can touch our heart and see a need and move us. And God can give us just understanding or maybe we care about something very deeply or maybe due to the talents or gifts God has given us. A rainbow of ways in which God can speak to us. Isaiah was living, as we assume, an ordinary day life. And one day, one day, one great day, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. It changed his life. It changed his direction. It changed his purpose. He had focus. And God May this be that day for me, for us. Well, Noah, Abraham, Isaiah, Elijah, the disciples, the possible, and Jesus himself, all were here for a purpose. And you and I are here for a purpose too. And uh, in order to know that, we have to have a vision. We have to have direction. And God has that for every person. And that's an indication of a spirit-filled life, visions and dreams. Sometimes we use the man Nehemiah as an example. He got his vision or his purpose just by something he heard. Somebody came by and told them about the condition of Jerusalem. And listen to this, he was so impacted that he sat down, he wept, he mourned, he fasted, and he prayed. Deeply moved and affected and challenged. And I ask myself, Roy, when is the last time you mourned and wept and fasted and prayed about anything? God, have, have mercy. Have mercy. Yes, through understanding, feeling, sense of responsibility, even anger can give you direction and purpose. When you see a child abused, do you feel anger? Well, maybe you're part of the answer to that. And so what are we doing? What are you doing, may I ask? And what am I doing? Every vision requires action and a response. And uh, so I came to you today with just a little thought about the importance of vision. Vision can change, vision can enlarge. As you fulfill a step in the vision, God can adjust and change and so on. But let every day count. You have the wonderful opportunity to have 24 hours in every day and every day can count towards the fulfillment of your vision. Thanks for listening. My name is Roy. Until next time, God bless you.